Okay, I would like to show how to make the hippo out of my book. Okay, so I'm going to be using my really small, the uh, 24 peg 3 16th loom, but I want you to keep in mind that you can use a any 24 peg loom, any 24 peg loom, just so long as you follow the yarn equivalent, okay, that goes with that loom. So with this one, I believe it's a DK weight that I'm using. Um, might be, it feels thinner, it feels more like it's a sports or fingering weight, personally. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you how to make this and we're going to follow this pattern along and this is actually one of the easier patterns out of my book in fact it's classified as beginner so um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to explain how to do this so what you want to do is you want to do a drawstring cast on 24 pegs and it says that you're going to do it flat okay so I'm going to weave in and out. All the way around. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to toss every other loop over. I have to push those down a little bit. So you're going to go in here and toss every other loop over. I have to go in here. And then that will create a stitch on every single pick. Okay. But do keep in mind with this hippo pattern that you're not actually going to drawstring the whole thing together tight. You're going to um, do it to where the stitches are flat because unlike a lot of my other patterns where I start at the back of the head and work forward with the hippo I start at the nose and work backwards because their mouth is so big okay And when you do this drawstring, make sure you always get the full loop over. Okay. And All right. Now, the first thing, oops, well, it'll be fun. Accidentally did it in the round, but it's okay. Um, you're going to end up sewing it together anyway. The only reason why I'm doing it flat is so that when you start to decrease, you aren't having to contend with anything. But if you accidentally do this, you don't need to restart over. All right, you just need to remember to go back and forth. Okay, so um, at this point it says rows 1 through 12 is knit. And so all you're going to do is just knit back and forth for 12 rows. So this is row 1. Okay, if you want to make this easier showing up later, um, what I find is if you knit the last stitch, like the first stitch of every single row, you'll have this beautiful chain that's easy to follow when sewing up. Okay, 
So I'm going to go back the direction because I am supposed to be knitting the flat, but it wasn't a big deal that I did a drawstring cast on the round. I'm going to do the flat like it says to do. Okay. So at this point, you're going to knit your way back, and I'm going to slip that first stitch because I want to find that I have an easy sew up. All right. I want to see that easy sewing. All right. So now that you see that I'm knitting back and forth, you're going to do this for a total of 12 rows. Okay. And then when we come back, we'll be ready to do the next section, which is um, where you're going to start decreasing on the change of the nose to the top of the head okay and that's where you're going to see that change okay all right so you'll want to pause the video and complete your 12 rows and then when you're ready to come back we'll start on row 13 which has decreasing but don't get freaked out it's really not that bad okay Alright, so again, you're going to knit the last stitch, slip the first stitch. What that simply means is you're skipping the first stitch and you're going to start knitting your way back around. Okay, so back and forth for 12 rows. I've already done two, so do 10 more rows and then we'll come back and do row 13. Okay, I have done my 12 rows and now I'm ready to do row 13 and this is going to where knitting flat is going to make have made most sense because it says to do four decreases four times okay basically you're doing four decreases all right and I'm going to show you what that means so normally I would go in and I would pick up eight stitches and I would place two stitches on four pecs but um, because I want to try to make this as simple as possible for beginners, I'm going to try to kind of baseline this. So what you want to do is you want to take your end stitch and you move it over one. And you want to knit the two together. You're going to take the next peg here, you're going to lift it, you're going to move it over, and then you're going to knit the two stitches together. Then you're going to lift up the next stitch, move it over, and then knit the two stitches together. And you're going to do this one more time. Lift up, move over, knit the two stitches together. Alright, then what you're going to do is you're going to lift this up, move it over, and line all these stitches you just decreased back up side by side. Okay. Lift that up. And move it over. Okay. Now, when you do something like that in that particular method, you're going to have to tighten those stitches up. Okay. Because you didn't lift up the stitches and stack them. All right. So that is how you do a decrease over, knit two together four times because you should have four empty pegs. One, two, three, four, right? So we did it. Now, what it says to do next is to, to knit eight. Although for some reason I have E-Wrap eight. And knit eight. Okay. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. Okay. Now, it says you want to do the same thing where you decrease four times. Okay. And this side may be a little bit more difficult, but you're going to lift up that stitch, move it over, and knit the two together. Now you could go in and you can move it back. Okay, so you decrease over and knit the two stitches together. You can move it back here. 
and decrease. Get the two stitches together. Move it back. And one more decrease. You can take that outer one a little bit over. You're just trying to get it all decreased together. All you're doing is a cinching area. It's not really exact science here. I'm like lacing. Be careful how you do your stitching. Decreases. Okay, so you do that last one. And remember, when you do that, you want to snug up those stitches. All right, there you go. That is a knit, decrease, knit two together four times, and you should have a total of eight pegs empty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that worked out right. Now, the next thing is, and this one's easy, is you're supposed to knit back and forth from rows 14 to 21. Okay, and that is basically six rows. Okay, six, seven rows. All right. So what you're going to do, and may I suggest again to continue knitting the last stitch, slipping the first stitch so you have an easier chain to sew up, okay? So I'm just going to go in and knit for six rows, okay? And then we should be ready to start on the ear row next. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and complete six rows of knit and you should be ready to come back and start on the ears and those are really easy too. So, I mean, this pattern really isn't that bad. It's actually pretty easy, okay? So, back and forth, six rows. And when we come back, we will be on row 22, which is our ear row. And uh, that'll be kind of complicated, but not really. And um, then we'll be ready to start on row 23. Okay. Okay, I have done my six rows, okay, and now I'm ready to do my ears, okay. So what I'm going to do is start on row 22, and what it says to do is it says to knit three. So here's one, here's two, and here's three. Then what it says to do is to do an ear. And it says to knit four, four rows. Knit three, knit two, knit three, knit four, four rows. Bring original loops back. Okay. So I'm going to put stitch markers. on my four stitches and I'm going to tell you to keep mark of this because once I show you one ear I'm going to leave it to you to do the other ear okay so and it looks like I have found a very small error let me put that in properly Minuscule errors you miss even when you go through and try to check everything. It's kind of like proofreading. If you're so used to it, you don't catch it. Okay, so it says to knit four, four, four rows. There's one. Then here's two. Then 
here's three. And here is four. Then it says to knit three. So here's one, two, three. Then it says to knit two. So here's one, two. Then it says to knit three. So you have always starting with the peg you finished with. So here is one, two, three, then knit four for four rows. So here's one, here is two. And three. And four. Okay. Then it says to bring the original loops back up on all four stitches. I'm going to try to make sure they're in order. There's the first one. And there's the second one. I'm trying to make sure they're not twisted. Okay. Sometimes that can give you fun. Okay. There you go. There you have it. Okay. You've now completed in here. You'll knit those two things together on the next row. Okay. says to do is to knit two. So you're going to knit one and two. Okay. Then it says to do another ear. This is where you go in in the next four stitches and place your stitch markers where you bring original loops back. All right. And then follow the process like we just did. And so you'll need to go back in the video and follow again and do exactly like we did with the first year with the second year. Once you complete your ear, then you'll just knit three to finish the row. Okay? So you do your ear, and then once you finish your ear, you just knit three. Okay? And that finishes the row. When we come back, I'll show you row 23, and then we should be to another kind of simple six-row knit, and then we'll be ready to draw a string bind up. So we're actually very close to finishing the head. Let's go ahead and pause the video and complete that much, and we'll come back and we'll be starting on row 23. Okay, so now we're ready to do row 23, and what we're going to do there is we're going to knit three, and we're going to knit two together four times. So here's one, two, three. And four. 
Then you're going to knit two. One, two. Then knit two together four times. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then knit three. One, two, three. All right. You'll just have created ears, which is kind of be hard to tell. Um, maybe you can kind of see in there that little bump. That's your ear. Okay. So at this point, it says to knit rows 24 through 28, which is five rows. Okay. So go ahead and um, pause the video and just knit for a total of five rows and then when we come back we're ready, ready to draw string bind off and we'll have head done okay and the body is really easy okay it's a lot of repeating and a lot of just general rows as well so this is actually a really easy pattern so go ahead and pause the video and work your five rows and we'll come back and finish the head up Okay, I've completed my five rows. I've cut a pretty long tail uh, so that I can sew at the back of the head and that kind of thing. Okay, so what I like to do is go the opposite side of the end of the working yarn and start doing my drawstring off that way. So I'm just going to toss the bottom leg over and pull through. So I'm going to do a drawstring bind off. And then I will end up sewing up the head. But I've got to leave an opening to add my polyfill and that kind of business. Okay. And I'll explain if you're making a larger one, you'll want to add your eyes and that kind of thing. And I'll explain that. Um, but it's from here that you add your personality to your animal and every animal will look different if you make this multiple times um, there's a little personality that works up differently every time you make a stuffed animal even now that I'm repeating these patterns my animals are coming up different than even the first time I made them so keep that in mind And yeah, lo and behold, look at them cute little ears. They're already attached. You ain't gonna sew them on later or anything like that. So there's your ears. Okay. And I've already kind of pulled my drawstring at the front to basically have all the stitches lining up where they should. And then I'm just going to pull that tight. Okay. Now, typically, I would leave this open, but what I would suggest doing is actually sewing the whole head up. Sew all the way down. Okay. And you always want to add your eyes in line with the middle of your ears you'll see it in the picture okay so once you sew all the way down through here what you want to do is you want to flatten this out and then sew here so sew it flat but before you sew it flat go ahead and stuff that head okay so stuff it good and then sew up a bit so my suggestion is to go ahead and sew this line stuff and then sew here but before you do that if you're going to add safety eyes you'll want to go ahead and add them now and you want to follow the center of the ear down to where you see that you did your decreases which is right through here you want to get to that base and so you want to add the eyeballs right in here okay um, I'm probably going because as small as this is I'm probably going to end up 
painting in eyes or gluing, hot gluing in some small rhinestones because making them this small, they're more keychain like than um, that of a toy for a child to play with. Okay, so um, go ahead and pause the video and complete your head, and uh, then we'll get started on the body. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get started on the body. Okay, and uh, it's a similar start for like we did on the head. Um, drawstring cast on, 24 pegs, circular, and then you're going to knit for six rows, okay? So um, that's pretty much the same, so you're just going to weave in and out all the way around. Okay, you weave in and out all the way around, and then you're just going to toss every other loop over. This is easier, of course, on a bigger loom, but um, I'm really into wanting to make small stuff right now. So, again, you make this on the 24 peg 5 eighths. It should be really easy. Okay. When I get to that, I want you to keep in mind you do the tail just like you did the ears. And so I'm not going to show filming that, all right? Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and complete six rows of knit. All right? And then when we come back, we will be on row seven, which includes legs and tail. All right? And um, the legs is going to be um, two options you can do. There's the seamless option and then there is the sew up option. And I will explain those. I usually like to do the seamless option. It saves you from having to sew. Okay. So pause the video and complete your six rows and we will come back and I will show you how to do the legs and tail. Okay, I have finished my six rows of knit, and I'm ready to do my leg on row seven, and I'm going to be working over five stitches, and I'm going to be knitting five stitches for 30 rows, bring original loops back on pegs one and five, knit two together, knit three is what it should be, knit two together. Okay, so we're only bringing the original loops back on pegs one and five. So we're going to count that over. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now. I personally don't want to have to sew these legs up. I'm going to do the method I have been doing. But if you don't mind sewing the legs up, then what you want to do is knit five for 30 rows and then bring the original loops back on pegs one and five, okay? Um, but if you want to do it my way where you don't have to sew anything, you'll need a lot more stitch markers. You're going to divide that 30 in half and do 15, okay? So. You either can do the full 30 rows or you can do the 15 and then be ready to add back chains, okay? And that's how I'm going to do this, okay? So that's my first row. In every slip you make, 
I'm going to knit the last stitch of each row and slip the first row. Every slip you make, you want to add a stitch marker. Okay, and how do you know? You're going to be slipping that first stitch. Okay, and then you're just going to knit your way over, and that's going to be row two. Okay, and then you're going to slip that stitch, and you're going to add a stitch marker to that slipped stitch. And this is going to be row three, okay? Now, if you're not going to do this method where you don't mind, you're willing to sew up your leg later, then just go ahead and do the 30 rows and come back to when I say we um, want to bring our original lips back, okay? And we'll go from there. Keep in mind on the leg part, remember this because I'm not going to go over it again. Right. Any section I have done already in this video, I will tell you when to go back to it so that I'm not having to refilm a whole lot. And um, if you've done the ears, I told you to make a mark because you're going to need to come back and you're going to need to do that for the tail area, the same exact thing. Okay. So I have just completed four rows, so go ahead and pause the video. You can either complete your 30 rows or 15 if you do want to do the no sew method, okay? So pause the video and get that much done and we'll come back. And if you're doing the no sew method, I'll show you the second half of the leg. Okay, as you can see, there is a lot of stitch markers in there, okay? And you'll see that when I finish that 15th one, I didn't actually add a stitch marker there. And there is a good reason for that, okay? So, what you want to do now is you want to find the closest stitch marker to the peg, which is this one, okay? And you're going to pull that loop back one, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to slip that first stitch and then you're going to knit your way over and knit the two together. Now if you don't want to chain to the side, then what you'll want to do is purl the two together. But then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to find the closest stitch marker to the peg and you're going to add it back to the peg. Okay, just like that. Alright. Then you're going to slip the first stitch over here. You're going to knit your way over and then knit the two stitches together. Okay. Then you're going to find the next closest stitch you're going to add it back. So you're always looking for the next closest stitch to the peg. Okay. Knit over. And then knit the two stitches together. Okay. So I've showed you that, what we're doing. So continue that process until you're down to the last two stitch markers. They, and that could be that's supposed to be your original stitches. So keep going until you're down to your last two stitch markers. And if you guys that decided to do your 30 rows, that's when you're going to want to chime back in, okay? So pause the video and get that much done. Okay, so you may find that you've been left with three stitch markers. Let's see if I can clear that out. Okay. okay, so you'll see that you've been left with three stitch markers. That's okay. You can take the one out, right? And what you'll do is you'll bring your original loops back up and pegs one and Five. Okay. 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to knit two together. One, two, knit three, one, two, three, then knit two together. Okay. And what you should find is you have a little leg there. Let me see if I can get something I can stick in there to show that you don't have any seams. Looks like I can stick something thicker in there. Okay. You should see that there's no opening. You've made a leg and there is nothing there. Okay. So that is how you close up a leg and not have to sew anything. Okay. So at this point, what it says to do next is to um, knit five. So one, two, three, four, five. Then it says to do a tail, but your tail is done exactly the same as the ear. Okay. And so you're going to put a stitch marker on the next four stitches, okay? And you're going to create a little tail. And what you'll want to do is you're going to go back in the video and do the ear for your tail, okay? So it's the same exact method. So what I'm going to tell you to do is go ahead and pause the video and complete your tail and then um, when we come back we should be ready to work our way over to the next leg and then I'm going to tell you to pause the video again and do the other leg. If you feel like you've got it from here feel free to just go ahead and continue and finish up row seven. Okay and then um, it's kind of pretty self-explanatory from here on out. If you feel comfortable, you can go in and finish up. Um, rows 8 through 26 is knit. Row 27 is a leg. Knit 14 leg. And then row 28 through 31 is knit. And then a bind off. So um, some of y'all may be familiar with this and ready to can finish up. Go for it. If not, you want to go back in the video where it shows how to do the ear. And you're going to do that for the tail. So you have your little ear here. It's going to be the same thing right here. Okay. And then when we come back, we will knit our way over and then I'll tell you where to start your other leg. Okay. So pause the video and get that much done. Okay. I have finished my little tail. And you might be able to see it. It's right there. Okay, so there's your little tail. Okay, and what you want to do next is you want to knit five. So here's one, two, three, four, five. All right. Then you're going to do your other leg. Okay, okay. And so you're going to stick the stitch marker and peg number one and five. At this point, you're going to repeat the same thing we just did over here with this leg in this slot right here. And then once you finish this leg, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to knit, just knit around um, you're going to knit for 18 rows, just knit, 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 18 rows after you finish this leg, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, complete your leg over here, then you're going to knit around, just round and round and round for 18 rows. When we come back, we should be on row 27. And that's where you're going to want to keep up with this leg row again. 
Okay, and um, then we're going to change up um, because you're not going to need to do another tail. So, um, go ahead and pause the video, complete your leg here, complete 18 rows of knit, and then when we come back, we're going to be on row 27. Okay? Okay, so you can see there's my two legs. There's the bulk of my body, and you'll see that I've gone ahead and done another leg, okay? And the reason why I did that is because on row 27, you do a leg, and then it says to knit 14, and then you do another leg, okay? So I've already completed a leg on the next, on these five stitches, so one, two, three, four, five, okay? And um, it's doing just the same thing as what you did down here. The uh, only difference is you're just going to go in and knit 14. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And you should have five stitches left over to do your other leg. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So you're going to do your other leg. Just like you did all the rest of them. And that completes row 27. All right. And then after that, it's rows 28 through 31 where you're just knitting. And... Um, that's just four rows. So what you want to do is finish row 27 and then do rows 28 through 31, which is four rows of just knit. So you just knit around for four rows. And then when we come back, we should be ready to bind off. And um, I finished doing my hippo head. I uh, cinched the eyes, sewed up the, sewed up the bottom, stuffed, set up the mouth and then I went in and um, cinched the eyes and that's where you send the needle through pull tight send the needle through pull tight and send the needle back through and that gets that kind of really nice indention and gives you more shape so if you're wondering how that's done okay so um, go ahead pause the video get the rest of the knitting done on the body and when we come back we'll be ready to bind off if you know how to do the bind off it's a regular bind off nothing special um, go ahead and do that um, but if you don't um, go ahead and pause the video and when you come back um, I'll be showing you how to do a bind off so do your other do row 27 then after doing row 27 knit for four rows and come back okay Here's both my legs. I've gone ahead and knitted my four rows, and now what I need to do is just bind off. And it's pretty simple bind off. So you knit the first two, take the second loop back, one, knit the bottom loop over, get you started. Then just knit the second one, take that second loop back to the first peg, toss the bottom loop over. Move over. Knit second peg. Take it back one. Toss the bottom loop over. Move it over one. It's just a standard bind off. Okay. Let's go ahead and pause the video and bind off your body and um. You should be able to go ahead and stuff it, okay? And if you did the was it 30 rows, um, what you want to do is you want to go in, you want to sew up the sides of the legs, okay? And uh, that way, if you uh, chose to do that method, well, yes, it's um, easier to knit. Um, you will have to uh, do some sewing. My suggestion is to start on the outside, work your way out, send the needle through so you don't see it here, work your way down, back up, 
send your way through in the inside and work your way down over here. That way you don't have to do a lot of tying off and weaving in and that kind of thing, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, finish binding off, stuff your body, and when we come back, I will show you how to put the head and the body together, okay? Okay, we have our two pieces, and I'm going to show you how to close up the back of the body. And it works the same no matter which cage you are. You want to do a star close. So you have here, you're going to go to your top point, send the needle through. Okay, so you're going to go to the top point and send the needle through. Then you're going to come down at an angle and you're going to send that through. You're going to come back up to the side just like if you were drawing a star. It's just exactly like if you're drawing a star. Then you're going to go directly to the side over here. Then you're going to go back down to the corner over here. Okay. Then you're going to pull. What you'll see is it finish closes in up the back of the body. Okay. And take and send that tail through. Right. And then just send it through now. If you feel like you have a few holes going on here, you can go about um, closing them up. difficult to go in and do a little hacking up on these. If you feel the need to. You don't always need to. This yarn was um, well, then I didn't feel it had a lot of stretch to it or anything like that. So, and then okay, was the back end. And I'm just gonna snip that tail off because you don't need it. Try not to touch any of the other stitches. Okay. Alrighty, now we're ready to sew on our head. And I had cut such a long tail that I have plenty of tail to actually sew the head on with. Now the head may need a little gathering in order to make it work, okay? That is not as difficult as you might think. Okay. All right. So what you're wanting to do is connect it here, okay? And so what you may need to do is go in and kind of do a gathering where you gather up uh, every other stitch so that it makes it a little easier. I mean, you could have done a drawstring bind off 
if you feel the need to, you can. Um, not a big deal. Just send it through every other stitch. Yeah, let's trim it down some. There's never a point where you feel like you might have stuffed too much, but I don't think so because of I don't think I have stuffed it too much just because a hippo has pretty big body and pretty big head usually. But if you feel like you've stuffed it too much, you can always go in and take some stuffing out. But always give give yourself a, a gauging idea of what you're wanting to do. Okay. So at this point, you're just going to kind of go in and weave in the head and the body together. Okay. Just go all the way around and do that. Okay. Try to make sure the back of the head lines up with the tail and the bottom where it goes. Okay. my hippo. Um, the head is sewn on. If you get any holes up in here, it's the time to mess with it more. Okay, so there is your hippo, okay, and um, if you feel like you want to do a little bit more in the head area on your sewing, go for it, okay. Sometimes it feels like you might need a little bit more. It never hurts to go in and do your touch-ups. Okay. And I think I might sew a little bit more on the back of the head so that the head sits up a little bit more. Okay. But overall, that is how you make a hippo from my animal book.